All right, here we go. Today we have Midas Yahoo. Welcome to Vlad TV. What's up, Vlad? Thanks for having me, man. Man, I've been a longtime fan. Longtime fan. In fact, when I got to New York and I was living in Borough Park around 2003, that was around the time I was seeing your posters around and, you know, seeing your name next to like Beanie Man and the, the oh, posters yeah. all around Brooklyn There was that one everything. reggae was Carafest like, poster. poster. Yeah, one of, one of, that one poster in particular, the Carafest poster, and it had all the legends like Buju and all the top Jamaican artists and one Hasidic dude right in the middle. It was kind of crazy. It was that like, was wild. That was actually a wild time. Yeah. You know, and years later, well, this is like, what, almost 20, a little more than 20 years later, we're actually doing the interview. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah, that, that was the time. Well, it's your first time here. I want to start in the very, very beginning. So yeah. you were born in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But then when you were a baby, you guys went to Berkeley, California. Correct. Yeah, that's where I went to college myself, and I spent a lot of years there. Interesting place. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think my I, my very first concerts were uh, Grateful Dead, 1980, 81. Uh, so I was one, two years old. My parents were sort of deadheads that kind of missed the Berkeley era. And then um, they lived on a farm. And one day, uh, the kid that used to like have breakfast with them, like the owners of the farm, the kid would have breakfast with them every morning. And one day the news was on, so, and it was talking about Jews. And the kid goes, my parents said they all should have been killed in the Holocaust. So my dad was like, all right, let's, let's go, you know, let's go to California. Let's drive across country. And they drove across country to Berkeley. And that's where I went to Berkeley Montessori School. And that was the foundational, you know, point of what, my first four years of life. So I always feel like a strong connection to that. You know, even though, you know, I don't remember that much. I feel like my roots are in Berkeley in a way. You know? You're living in Berkeley, and your parents are both Jewish. Correct. How Jewish are they? Because as a Jew myself, there's a huge gamut from not yeah. Jewish at all, eating pork, you know, never go to temple, to ultra-Orthodox. So at that point, they're, they're, not, they're not very Jewish at all. I mean, I think they, my dad wears a Star David around his neck. They, they spent some time in Israel. You know, they were going to make Aliyah, so they have a strong connection to Israel. And um, I think they feel Jewish, but they're not religious in any way. And it's not until we move back to New York, we moved to White Plains, New York. And uh, they found sort of like a, a reconstructionist synagogue they felt comfortable in, sort of a very liberal kind of uh, place, you know, egalitarian. And they had a Hebrew school there. They started sending me to Hebrew school there uh, after, after regular public school or whatever. So on Monday and Wednesday, I would go from four to six, Sunday, 10 to 12. Did that till I was 13 or whatever, till I got bar mitzvahed. And then, uh, basically when I was 16, I went on a program, a conservative program to Israel where I spent three months, uh, in school there in the fall. That, and that was a pretty, uh, pivotal like moment for me, I'd say. And then I didn't become, I myself didn't become religious till I was in college. I was at the new school. I was like 21. It was right around the time of 9 11. Um, and that's when I started really becoming religious. And then I really, you know, went for it, moved to Crown Heights and, and Yeshiva and the whole, the whole nine yards. Well, let's talk about it a little bit before then. Yeah. So you're going to high school, but at one point you kind of started to rebel a little bit. And I guess you went to a fish concert while, was, while you were uh, still in high school? Yeah, I went to I went to see Fish at the Centrum in um, in Worcester, Mass. Uh, I was 16. I'd come back from Israel, and I had kind of like had this whole kind of spiritual trip there a little bit. I was on I was sort of on some on something a little bit different than everybody than my friends and everybody else. I was kind of like kind of like questioning a lot of things and and start sort of starting this real this journey kind of. Um, and uh, yeah, at that time. Um, I met my, my friend from Israel at a fish show, and yeah, we dropped acid for the first time, 16 years old, went, and the music, the experience that I had there, I think also, again, was like one of really, really monumental moment in my life. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, that I became a fan of Fish to this day. That's, that's really the only band that I go see. I will pay money to get tickets and just, just bug out and just dance. My wife is into them bring the kids sometimes, everything. Yeah, I'm like a real fan. I remember when I was reading this while uh, you know researching you, what's interesting was 
when I was a little bit older, maybe around 23, 24, I went to Burning Man and I did mm. acid for the first time myself. And I had brought a drum with me and I got into a drumming circle. And that was the first time I ever performed, you know, to a crowd because people started to gather around and dance to me and this other guy who were drumming together. And at that moment, high off acid in a drum circle yeah. at Burning Man, I decided that I'm going to be a DJ and I'm going to devote my life to music. And it was a total <laughs> switch from what I was doing because I was a computer science guy and I was... But it, it was interesting hearing you say that and hearing me, you know, my experience, it's like, yeah. oh, it's kind of similar in a way. Yeah, no, I mean, literally, like that, like almost the exact experience. I mean, I lived in Burlington, Vermont, in the park that fall. I had got like, I had dropped out of high school, I got in, in some fight with my parents and left. And a friend of mine had a bus, a little VW bus, and we drove to Burlington and we just camped out in the park for a few weeks. And we went to a rain, then we ended up at a rainbow gathering. And during that time, I heard someone singing Rastaman chant in the park. Just a dude with a, a drum, this dude named Nature Boy. I, I recently ran into him again. He's in Baltimore. He's just, you know, he works for like the government. He's like works for the Navy now or something like that. But he, um, the way he sang it just like really touched me. And I, I think you, you kind of understand this. Like if you have in Hebrew, the word for it is like a hush. If you have like a deep feeling for, for music, um, when you hear something and it touches you deeply, uh, you know, you're able to sort of, like I immediately knew that I could do that. And, um, you know, I started doing it. I started singing that song and playing the, the, the drum or whatever. And in, on, in Atlanta on Halloween, I really bugged out. I had like a really bad trip and I got real paranoid. And I thought I was being followed around the arena. I lost my shoes, you know. It was like, you know, I was 17 years old or whatever. And um, I come out of the arena and I find my drum. And I go into a, a parking lot, like a closed parking lot, and I start. I, I see some kid that I had met in Vermont or somewhere along the road who had heard me sing the Rasta Man chant, and we started drumming, and I started singing it. And, you know, I, again, I was tripping. So, you know, you don't know exactly what's distorted in reality, but in my mind, I became Modest Yahoo, like in that moment. I became... Literally, I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds of people that came and packed it out and people spitting fire and it was this fucking carnival. Um, and I was at the center of it, you know? And I, at that moment, I realized I was like, I could, I have the, uh, somehow I, ha I felt like I had the magic. You know what I meant? Well, okay. And you started out as MC Truth. Yes. In Oregon. Yeah. So then I go to Bend, Oregon. I end up on a, a wilderness treatment program. Uh, for kind of wild kids, I'm I'm 17. I come back from fish tour with a handful of of issues, from scabies to you know quaddies, which are flying lice that fly out of your dreadlocks. Um, <laughs> the scene of me coming home from tour is pretty fucking hilarious because I'm sick and I got mono. And I'm like, I've been like in a, tr I've been like in the backseat of a car for like four days. I haven't eaten because I can't get anything down. And I go to the hospital and they assume I have bronchitis. They give me the wrong medication. At some point, they're like, you got to call your parents, dude. And, and I call and my mom is like, where are you? And I'm like, we're on the way to this show. She's like, they can drop you at this airport, have them drop you off. She gets me a ticket. The only ticket she could get was a, a first class ticket. I had never flown first class in my life. She buys the ticket. I walk onto the plane in those days before 9-11. This is in the 90, this is like 98 or 96, no, 97. No shoes, no shoes and a drum. And like, you know, just a mess, you know? And I get off the plane, I come home and I can, I can barely put a sentence together, you know? And I was like that for a little while. I was pretty spun out and um, went to like Arms Acres. I went to like a rehab. Eventually, I tried to go back to high school, and that didn't make sense. So my, my mom was like, yo, you want to go on, like, Outward Bound? And I'm like, yeah, of course, I would love to. And then, you know, I go out onto this wilderness trip, and they're taking your shoelaces away. And I'm like, this is an Outward Bound. You know? <laughs> and um, basically, you have to hike in silence in the desert for, for like, three weeks, you know? And you do these, like... Uh, vision quest things where you you sit in one place for three days, like the size of this rug. 
uh, in the middle of the woods. You can't see or hear anybody, and you just um, kind of bug out. And so I did that a couple times and then ended up in Bend, Oregon in like a year-long program. And that's when I started doing, started performing and doing music. And uh, there was like an open mic night. It was mostly like cowboys at that time in Bend, Oregon. It was, it was still before all, everyone came up from California and stuff. And um, there was a kid that I met in town who had dreadlocks, played guitar and freestyle rapped and played the drum. Me and him connected right away. And we started doing this thing, Mystical Truth. And we would go, on, we'd go to the open mic night and we would just bug out. And then they just decided to give us our own night. So we would take like mushroom tea and I would wear like a flags and we would come from the back with like sage burning. And, and then we would just like bring our friends on stage and bug out. And that's, that's kind of where I started, how I started performing. Yeah. Okay. So you come back to New York and you go to the new school. Yeah. And around that time you started uh, going to an Orthodox Jewish synagogue. Well, first of all, I know you come from like hip hop, a lot of hip hop background and stuff. So that is like um, school is right next to Fat Beats on A Street. Uh, it's it's the time of Lyricist Lounge, Raucous Records, um, you know, The Roots, Black Star. I saw like at Tramps, I saw um, Common with The Roots backing him up, and I saw like uh, the this Kenny, this dude Kenny Muhammad beatbox, and that really kind of like changed me because I was into reggae music and I was into jam band, like Fish, you know? But uh, all my friends listened to hip hop growing up and stuff, but I hadn't really, really gotten into it until that time. So first I would say I started like in college there for a couple of years. And then uh, at some point I started to really get interested, more interested in Judaism. I really wanted to like, to dive deeper into it. And so I started just going around to different synagogues just by myself. I would just check out different places. If it didn't matter to me if it was Orthodox or Hasidic or Reform or whatever it was. I was just like reading books and just diving into it. And for some reason, I felt like my identity became very, very important to me to figure out who, who I am. And I figured as being a Jew and having this kind of spiritual kind of tilt to the way I see things, I just just, just was like, you know, I'm just going to explore that as, as much as I can. And I'm the type to go kind of all the way with things. So when I found cer I found certain things to be authentic and certain things not to be, and I automatically shy away from the things I feel aren't real. And, and I, that brought me into really, into the Hasidic, into that Hasidic world. 